forward slash troubledwaters.pdf. This is going to be brief. Amen. We're going to celebrate my mama's birthday today, so amen. Amen. I thank God for my mama, man. And that's okay. Hey man, she had it at me. <laughs> yeah, you better just, just, you ought to be grateful for your parents. Amen. And if your relationship with them is strained, unstrain it. You can unstrain any relationship. Amen. You just, amen. You can. Go fix that. Pray for God to fix that relationship. That relationship has absolutely, positively, Everything to do with your future and the future of your children. You keep up mess in that, you will have mess in your house. Amen. You can't hide from it. You got to deal with it. Amen. Trouble waters. So many times we rely on our intellect, our understanding, or our ability to deal with things in this life. But the Bible tells us not to do this. Don't rely on, look at somebody say, don't rely on yourself. Just when you get confidence in yourself, self will betray you. Amen. So the Bible tells us not to do this. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto what? Your own understanding. Empty your heart out of what you want to do. And don't trust what you know outside of God. That's the bottom line. You have to trust in the Lord. Amen. Those of us that are in Christ must always keep God's power where? in front of us and this is a basic message so oh did I read the scripture Proverbs 3 and 5 trust in the Lord with all thy heart lean not unto thine own understanding so those of us that are in Christ must always keep God's power in front of us his power should supersede our ability and strength is it, amen on our own power have you tried your own power where did your power get you now, when you thought you were supersonic spiritual, where did that get you? Right when we think we're supersonic spiritual, we'll get something wrong and got to go before the Lord and learn, relearn again. Because God wants us dependent upon him. It's very important y'all understand this. Zechariah says, then he answered and spake unto me saying, this is by the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel saying, not, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Look at somebody and say, not by might, not by, not by, power, not by power, but by his spirit. That's it. That's it. So what we're seeing now is a world full of folks that's not filled with the spirit. Church after church after church, folks get up and teach philosophy and teach, you know, they motivational speak and make people feel good and all of that, but it's absent of the Holy Ghost. So folks go home with demons, go home with ailments, and most importantly, they go home with issues. Issues that weren't taken care of because the message had no power. See, you're supposed to preach against what the flesh does. If you're catering to the flesh, you don't need the power. The power comes to help us with stuff that we don't have the power to do. Is that making any sense? So when, you, when we're preaching the gospel, we have to preach with the power of the Holy Ghost because it's that power that changes us. Yeah. Why be in Christ and not allow his power to operate on our behalf? You can't spray Jesus on like cologne. He has to work from within you. 
Amen. You wondering why your problems won't go away? It's because he's not working from within you. You're trying to handle it in your mind. Let me tell y'all something. Get out. Look at somebody and say, get out of your head. You know what your head is full of? Whatever you filled it with. You're not going to watch the Game of Thrones marathon and have the power of God working through you. Look, somebody don't see. I just went too far. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not going to watch, what's that? Give me one of them Negro series. Power. You know, all the Negro series, they always got some old gay dude. Always. They can't have a series without gay. The show could be about ice cream and uh, ice cream man gay. Why is it always gay? Gotta throw that in there. You watch it. You get used to seeing it. It stops bothering you. Yeah. It stops bothering you. Then when you're confronted with that spirit, you have no power. That's okay. Look, y'all, I didn't come to preach for hand claps. I know what I'm talking about. You don't have any power. Then when you need to pray for something, I mean really get something from the Lord, you have no power because you full of power, the show power. You got the wrong power. Look, everybody, well, we watch things in moderation. I don't care how you watch it. I'm just telling you what, what it's doing to you. You have the wrong appetite if you want to if you want to fight spiritual warfare. Something's wrong with your appetite. If that's the diet you own, then that's what you're gonna produce. Keep eating honey buns and fig newtons all day and watch what it produces on your body. You're gonna see patches of figs. You're gonna be built like a fig. Keep eating it. Because that's your diet. And your diet is going to manifest in the physical. You're going to turn into what you eat. Well, the same thing happens in the spirit. If all you watch is cussing and gay junk, it's going to manifest. Yeah, then when you're confronted with a real problem, you don't have any power. That's okay. I, you know, I will walk around and find some amens. Somebody in here know what I'm talking about. I, I just keep moving. Amen. And we got a mobile camera. Keenan will follow me anywhere. I go, I, I find some A's, amens. But why be in Christ and not allow his power to operate on our behalf? If we could do it ourselves, then there would be no need for the Holy Ghost. All you got to do is read the Old Testament and read the ones that didn't have the power of the Holy Ghost, the dumb stuff they kept doing. Right. Just dumb. Right. Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him that is able to do what? Yeah. Above. That's the key. He can do things above all that we ask or think. His power can do things above better than us above us not just above what we do but above what we think that's his power that works within us amen can I keep preaching there are so many things fighting against us in this life fighting against our minds, our bodies, and our overall health. The devil is absolutely trying to destroy God's precious creation. Yes. Amen. Probably in August, we're going to go on our sugar fast again. Yes. Trying to center it around the state fair because folk got mad at me last year, Pastor. The fair, the state fair. <laughs> Look at them. They know who I'm talking about. They just... Pastor, what you doing? That's the state fair. I'm a card carrying member. I have special privileges. I can walk in any tent. I got a gold card. I have a 
frequent flyer miles. Frequent. Amen. So we're going to try to schedule it around so you can eat your fried salad. <laughs> they fry everything at the fair. Fry. Everything is fried. Fried pudding. They fry stuff that don't have the consistency to be fried. Fried pudding. What? That sound good. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it don't even have... It, it, you know what I mean? Like, what? Fried sunflower seeds. They're going to have everything. Fried watermelon. Won't water put the put the fire out? You gonna fry that? So we gonna try to schedule it around, but we're doing the sugar fast because some of y'all out of control. Amen. You can't eat a donut every day. Donut. That's fried dough for nuts. It's fried dough. Look at somebody. You just saying that because you can't have it on your diet. Yes. Yes, I am. Yeah, yep. Because Shipley's used to minister to me. <laughs> Shipley's. <laughs> Ooh, but I didn't eat one every day. You can't eat that every day. Look at somebody say, you can't eat that every day. You can't. One day, one day you just not going to you can't have sugar. One day, I just, I can't have it because I have it every day. You ought to tell yourself that. <laughs> Get mad at yourself just like that. I can't have it every day. Amen. And my speech is slurring and I'm just, I can't. I, I... And the reason why I'm telling y'all this, okay, I'm joking. I'm, I'm having a good time, but let me get real serious. The reason why I'm telling this is because of what I just read. There are so many things fighting against us in this life. Our overall health is being attacked. They shooting stuff in the air, injecting stuff in all the food. The air you breathe, have you checked out air quality yet? Have you ever looked on your app for air quality and see what they say is happening every day? And what is it attacking? They say breathing. Oh, today is a good day for those that have allergies, but breathing, breathing, like in God's world, like outside, I'm supposed to be cautious of my breathing, something I don't pay attention to. Yeah, that's how bad it is right now. They're trying to, man, the devil is absolutely trying to destroy God's precious creation. What did he say? The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to do what? Destroy. You think the devil wants you alive? He wants to kill you. And I've just made my mind, mind up, J. Brian. It ain't going to be with my fork. That ain't going to be the story. Oh, he the, did the truth behind hip hop all over the world. And oh, cast demon. Oh, but, but his fork killed him. Food? Food ain't that good. Look at somebody. <laughs> well, I don't know who cooking for you. Food is not worth it. That's not, it's not worth death. Amen. It's not worth death. We get so used to carrying around ailments, issues, harmful baggage that we neglect to ask the Holy Spirit to remove it and cleanse it and cleanse us from it all. So basically we get used to the issues that we have and our life the way it is. And we neglect to ask the Holy Spirit to do anything about it. So we begin to just live subpar lives. And listen to this, and this going, ooh. 
It starts with your fork. See, if you won't go through what you eat, then you're not going to go through your personality. You're not going to challenge your own character if you don't challenge what you'll eat. That's what the Bible calls a fast. The fast is when you push the plate away so you can consider your diet and think about, okay, I'm going to push this away. This is bringing me too much pleasure. I'm going to push pleasure away for a season so I can deal with what's wrong with me. God, you can show me what I need to fix. Oh, the hand claps. Yeah, well, we did the sugar fast the last time. Folks was having realizations. The Holy Ghost was moving like a crusade. Like Shambach was here. Yeah, but that's what happens. You get so used to eating certain things. Those things begin to dumb down your taste buds, your palate, all of that, and then they dumb you down. When you challenge your body, challenge with that fork, push that away, you'll begin to see things clearly. Have you ever gone on a fast and then after a couple of days, I don't know if you've done maybe a three, say, say a three day, you do a three day fast, you can smell everything. You can walk somewhere and smell everybody's cologne, flowers outside. You can, you can just smell. Why couldn't you smell before? Because you had dumbed down your palate, your taste buds, and your sense of smell by just eating junk and not paying attention to what you eat. Right. Right. Or you go on the sugar fast, then you try to eat something you used to eat, and you be like, oh, that's way too sweet. That's, that's way too sweet. Oh, but folks ain't liking this message, but you should see the spiritual activity going on behind y'all. Yeah. Normally you get a sweet tea. Now you're like, man, I can't, I, I'm going to have to half a nap with unsweet. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You can't drink it no more. Tea just pour like syrup. Yeah. You need to quit drinking sugar yeah. all the time. Look and see. That's okay. Energy drinks. Oh, gosh. Oh, Lord. And I tell people all the time, man, you drinking energy drinks to work. If you're drinking energy drinks, drinks to work your job, something is really wrong. Uh-oh. Yeah. That's okay. I stand right here. Elders with me. Hey, Amen. You shouldn't have to drink energy drinks to work your job. That means you are overworking or you are, you have issues that you need to deal with. Something is wrong for you to expel that much energy where it has to be put back in by sugar. Thank you, Walter. Boy, I mean, somebody like, what does this have to do with troubled waters, Pastor? I saw the water in the background. And what, that? I'm staying right here, Doc. I know it. I know it hurts. Somebody got a piece of pecan pie in their purse. You pulling pecans off as I'm preaching. Mm. <laughs> you can't eat like that all the time. Amen. <laughs> but you carrying around ailments, issues, and harmful baggage. And I'm going to tell you, when you eat all that sugar and then you crash after you eat it, that's depression time. That's when you start thinking about all the stuff you wish you had done better. All the decisions you wish you had made. What happened to me? The trauma, the pain people caused me. All of that happens during that crash because your brain is strained. See, that's okay. Yeah. yeah, I figure if I'm going to preach the gospel and I'm going to preach what God says, I'm going to have to eat right. Yeah. Amen. Because if I come in here after I done had a Tahitian treat at a honey bud, I'll be saying stuff. 
Ain't no telling what I say. I hate all y'all. You know them preachers that be doing that? Yeah. Go check the desk drawer in the office. <laughs> Snack bar. That's your desk. I went to this one pastor's church and preacher for him. And I went behind. I said, say, he pulled, he opened his drawer. I, I got to take some. He pulled his drawer open. He had about 50 prescriptions. I say, your name on all these? Or did you take these up during the healing prayer? I'm thinking maybe you had a crusade or something in here. These all yours? One drawer wouldn't even close. They were so tall. They were big, tall bottles. I said, man, is this all yours? You got to take all this to pastor? But he's carrying around ailment and issues and harmful baggage and neglecting to ask the Holy Spirit to remove it and cleanse him from it. Can I keep preaching? 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's so, if he's in Christ, he's supposed to be a what? What's supposed to be passed away? Old things. What old things? Just old things. The old you. The old you supposed to be passed away. The old issue. The trauma, the pain, all of that stuff you carry it. Yes. And people do anything to try to void themselves of their past so they don't think about it anymore. So they, they, they drinking. That's all cigarette is. You don't get nothing from a cigarette. That's like the biggest waste of lung cancer ever. You, you, you're not getting anything from it. You're smoking because the nicotine is scrambling your mind and keeping you from dealing with stuff and thinking about stuff. That's all it's doing. That's all a cigarette is doing. If you got a cigarette addiction, you're wasting your money. If they add up all the money you spend on cigarettes, you could buy a, a house instead of dealing with what's wrong. That's all weed is. Amen. Then you graduate to prescription drug. Then you got cocaine and hair rod, like the old folks say. All these different drugs that people use. They're just trying to mask what's wrong with them. But we're in Christ. We're supposed to be new creations. Our past is not supposed to haunt us. All things are supposed to become new if you're in Christ. Many feel guilt and unworthiness because of things they did in the past that may have led to the issues that plagued them. Well, Jesus died for that too. We all made mistakes. We all did dumb stuff in sin that led to some issues. But Jesus died for that. And he wants us to have victory over that thought process. Man, if the devil can get you in a bad way every, every other day, then you don't have the spirit of the Lord in you. Second Corinthians says, we are troubled on every side, but what? That means trouble is all around us. Your trauma, your everything that happened to you. Yeah, it could be all around you, but you shouldn't be distressed. Amen. Perplexed. We're puzzled by some stuff, but we're not in despair. We're persecuted, but we're not forsaken. Then sometimes we are cast down. But guess what? We're still alive. Look at somebody say, I'm still here. I've been cast down before, but I'm still here because the spirit of the Lord is alive in me. The Bible tells us that 
he was wounded, bruised, and beaten for our sake. These things were done to him to pay for what we have done to ourselves. Did you hear that? He allowed himself to be wounded and bruised and beaten because he knew we would wound ourselves and bruise ourselves and beat ourselves. So these things were done to him to pay for what we've done to ourselves. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes, what? Yeah. We're healed. Yeah. And that's just not healed from a disease. That's healed from trauma. Trauma is a disease. What happened to you? What happened to your family? What happened to your parents' marriage? What you saw, what you experienced, you got to be healed from that. And by his stripes, heal from that divorce that you had to go through as a child. That deadbeat dad that denied your existence. You have to be healed from that. That's trauma. That's an ailment. Jesus took our issues to the cross and died to pay the penalty for them. So we wouldn't have to. He didn't just pay for present and future sins. But he also heals us, remakes us, and gives us victory over the pain and emotional issues that sin causes. Yeah. Somebody's sin, maybe it was yours, somebody else's, led to that trauma. And you got to be healed from it. I hope y'all listening to this. Somebody's still thinking about the state fair and the sugar fast. You ain't got past that. Oh, what am I going to do? Whole month. So let me stock up on Oreo triple stuffed. The triple stuff. That's too much stuff. That's too much stuff. And what is the stuff? You know what they put in the Oreo? Do y'all really know? Y'all want to know what that is? I'm going to tell you. Well, yes, I'm going to tell you. You need to know. Remember, remember great grandmama, for some of y'all, but grandmama used to fry chicken in shortening. Shortening. You know, shortening. That's the white stuff. Shortening. Remember that? Well, add sugar to that, and now you got an Oreo cookie feeling. That's all it is, sugar and shortening. Short. Mama, little baby love, shortening, shortening. <laughs> And you know shortening ain't coming out of you. It only goes in. It goes in. It don't come out. It just goes in and gets to grab it at your heart. It finds a ventricle to rest in. Tell them, doctor. <laughs> it, it, finds a, it finds, oh, what's pumping us around? Hey. Oh, that's a heart. I'm going over there. That's where it's going. Okay, let me finish. <laughs> I did a whole heart illustration. Let me teach this in school. Yep, that's what's happening. Sugar and shortening. And you want the double stuff. It's never enough. Can I keep preaching? And I'm trying to just help you feel better about yourself. Eating that kind of stuff makes you put yourself down. You don't feel good about yourself when you fill yourself up with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Then you take it out on somebody else. Your husband hates you. 
your wife hates you because of the way you treat them because of the way you feel about yourself your children don't want to be home they can't wait till they get old enough so they can leave because of the way you eat and think now I'm, I'm serious and I know this ain't no new diet I'm on I preached this way back in Pharmacos I've been preaching this that's your fuel that's what's fueling you that's what you operate with that's your gasoline Summary! There we go. Doing my illustration. Ah! There is an interesting story in John chapter 5 about Jesus coming and healing a man that was waiting on the waters to be troubled. Here we go. Here's the waters. Finally got to him. John, John 5 and 2. It starts out and it says, now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folks, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the waters. Right? Verse 4, and those of you that are Bible scholars, I know verse 4 was added after the fourth century to, it was added for emphasis, so some manuscripts do not contain this fourth verse. But this fourth verse is just a reiteration of the seventh verse. So the seventh verse, if you read the seventh verse, it says what the fourth verse says, so I like the fourth, fourth verse, and I'm gonna preach it. For an angel, it says, went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. So the first person to step in, once the angel came down and troubled the waters or stirred the waters, angel, uh, the first one that stepped in was the one that got healed and everybody else had to wait for the next season of the troubling of the water. A certain man was there which had an, an infirmity 30 and 8 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him and said, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me in the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. That's why it's a reiteration of the fourth because he just told you the same thing the fourth said. Jesus said unto him, rise, take up your bed and walk. In other words, you don't have to wait on the troubling of the water. Amen. Amen. Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately, look at somebody and say immediately. immediately. The man was made whole, took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. So Jesus walked up to him and did what he couldn't do for himself in 38 years. This man waited 30 plus years by a pool for healing, even though he could not get in the pool himself. He waited all that time because he had to use his own strength to get in the pool. So that was the problem. He, how, how you can't walk and you're going to get in the pool so you can walk? And that's what many of us are doing. With our ailments, we are literally trying to work on it ourselves when we have the problem. If the problem is you, you need someone greater than you to fix the problem. I know I'm preaching in here, that's okay. I feel the anointing of God no matter how you're looking at me and how you're thinking about candy. He waited all that time because he had to use his own strength to get in the pool. But once Jesus came, he no longer had to use his own strength, but rather he could rely solely upon what? Jesus' Jesus's power. The angel that came and stirred the waters with healing virtue representing the coming of the Holy Ghost that would be available to all whenever needed. We do not 
have to live a life of longing to be better anymore. The Holy Ghost, look at somebody say, the Holy Ghost has come. So we don't have to live a life of longing to be better anymore. We do not have to wait on our deliverance and healing. We do not have to rely on our own ability or understanding either. We can rely solely on the power of the Holy Ghost to get what we need. Oh, this is so good. We can be healed. Look at somebody say, you can be healed right now. You don't have to wait 38 years. We can be healed right now. We can be delivered right now. We can be set free right now. Every issue that our past caused, whether it was someone else's doing or our own foolish actions that led to our torment, can be settled and resolved today because of God's power. Amen. God is continuously troubling the water of his spirit and all we have to do is have faith and believe that it is done and what will happen it will be done in the passage the pool water was troubled for a season to offer healing to the first one to enter however the holy spirit is now living water which means it can be stirred inside of us whenever we need it today you can be cleansed from years of struggles, years of issues, years of torment, God's living water can make you whole whenever you need him to. That's what he provides for us. You don't have to sit and wait. And you don't have to be the first one. It doesn't expire. There's no expiration date. This Holy Spirit can fix it for good. Amen. John 7 and 38. He that believeth on me as the scripture hath said. Out of what? You don't have to go to no pool. <laughs> he said if you believe on him out of your belly. When the Holy Ghost fills you out of your belly shall flow rivers of what? That's water that's alive all the time. It doesn't have to be stirred every season. It's alive all the time. And God can fix your ailment right now. Amen. Everyone stand to your feet. You know, we get so used to, man, this happened to me, this happened to me, I got to carry this around, I got to carry this around. And we just totally minimize the regeneration of the Holy Ghost. What it really does, it can regenerate us, change it, fix it. I know we all come from different backgrounds. I don't know what everybody's been through. I know what I've been through. And I know I have to have the power of the Holy Ghost to come alive in me and fix all that happened to me. So if that's you and you need that, I want to pray with you today. Just come on up. And we're going to believe that God's going to trouble the waters inside of you so that it will be perpetual so that it will fix what is broken so that it will change what needs to be changed I don't want to pass that church that glosses around this kind of stuff and won't deal with it I don't want to be a part of that the churches come a dime a dozen folks coming in there to feel better I want to feel good when I'm not there I want to be good when I'm not there when the music isn't playing, when nobody's singing, when it's just me, I want to be okay. So I want the Holy Ghost to challenge everything that needs to be challenged. Fix everything that needs to be fixed. Repair everything that's broken. 
All you got to do is bring it to him. Bring it to him. Bring it to him. You don't have to wait by the pool. You won't get stepped over. Nobody will beat you to it. But the Holy Ghost will come alive in you. And that healing, living waters of the Spirit will make you whole. Amen. Hallelujah. Everyone just bow your heads. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for how your word speaks. And Father God, we believe what your word says. We believe what it is speaking. And so Father, we pray right now, all of us, that the healing power of the Holy Ghost would flow out of our bellies, will flow into our lives, will fix what is broken. Every ailment, sickness, disease, trauma, every emotional issue where our hearts were broken, where our trust was misused and mishandled, Go deep inside. Hallelujah. The thing about water and any construction worker or people that work with water understands that you can't stop water. You can seal it up. You can plug it up. But over time, water just finds a way. God, we need the water of your spirit to find a way. Find a way through every crack, every crevice, everything we got boarded up, everything we're trying to protect, whatever it is, let the water of your spirit find a way. Get in there and cleanse us and make us whole for the things others did to us, for the things we did to ourselves, whatever it is. Heal us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And fill us. Come on, lift your hands up. Fill us. Fill us, God, with your spirit. Fill us with your spirit and tell us what's in the way. And we'll move it. Tell us what's in your way. What is in your way, Lord? We'll remove it so that we can be filled, healed, delivered, and set free. So we can live in victory, Lord from this day forward in Jesus name we pray amen amen hallelujah 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 come on and hug somebody and say let God trouble your waters let God trouble the waters Stir it up. Let him stir it up in you. Trouble the waters, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Has to be him. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I feel the presence of God in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, if you dare to bring it to him, I guarantee you, this is what he wants. God wants us free. He wants us walking in victory. Amen. Amen. He don't want us saved walking in defeat. He don't want us naming his name without the power that's in his name. Hallelujah.